This video is part two of last week's video where I recreated a Mac OS button in Figma with a lot of attention to detail. And now I'm gonna recreate that same button in CSS. If you're not familiar with the techniques in this video, let me know what areas you might like to see covered in future videos. So I'm not even gonna bother with a real HTML template. I'm just gonna put a style tag into this document. I'm gonna do a really crude CSS reset resetting all the margins, padding, and set the box sizing of everything to border box. Add a body tag, a div with a class of button, and put my button label in there. Okay, I'm just refreshing the browser to make sure that shows up. And now let's start uh, styling the body. So I wanna put a background color. I'm gonna go into Figma to find the actual background color that we were using. Having a background color here is gonna mean the button pops off a bit more, so it's easier to see what I'm doing. And we're gonna verify that it blends into the background correctly. Next, I'm gonna set the font to this Apple System font, which is a special font family that will use the San Francisco font or whatever the system font of your Mac is. And I'm gonna set the text color that we discovered in Figma. And I'm gonna put some padding on the body just to bring the button a little bit away from the edge. Now I'm gonna style the button class. I'm gonna set a pretty arbitrary width on here. The height is 20 pixels, I remember that. And the background color, of course, is white. I'm gonna set the border radius to five pixels because I remember that from when we recreated it in Figma. And now I need to make sure that the button label is centered properly. So I'm gonna actually add a div around the label with a class of label. And that's gonna give me a little bit more control. So I'm gonna style that button dot label. I'm gonna set the height to 100% and then use Flexbox to vertically center the text within that. I know you can probably do this faster with CSS Grid, but I'm just used to doing this. And then I wanna offset this vertically by one pixel because the exact center doesn't match what the actual button is. Now the margin top, that didn't quite work right because it pulled my whole button up. So I decided to go with um, position relative which will allow me to move it one pixel relative to its natural position, and that worked. Now I wanna add that border around this, which needs to be an outer border, and with CSS, I find the easiest way to do that is with a box shadow, so that's X, Y, blur, and then the spread value is gonna be 0 0.5, so no blur here, but a 0 0.5 width, and the color of this border, semi-transparent black, so I'll use RGBA, and then we have red, green, and blue all set to zero, and the alpha component is gonna be set to 4%, if I remember correctly. Now I messed up something here. I forgot to put pixels for the width, and the border is too dark because I forgot to put 0 0.04 for 4% instead of 40%. I'm just double checking that that was indeed 4% in Figma. Now I'm zooming in. I'm gonna zoom in a lot on the button to check the details of each pixel, and I'm using an accessibility feature on my Mac to zoom in. I'll probably do a video about this technique in the future. Now we need to do the blur effect in the background. And remember that blur has a gradient across it. So I'm gonna start by adding another div inside of my button div for this blur. And this div doesn't need anything inside of it. I'm gonna start styling this. So I'll make a selector for it. I can just set the width and the height to 100% because they're inside of that button div. So they'll just match the height and width of the button. Now I'll use background image, linear gradient, and I'm just gonna put red and blue to make sure I've typed this all in correctly. So that looks right, but I need to move it up and get it behind the button. So I'm gonna set position relative on the button itself so that I can position this blur absolute within that. So we'll do position absolute on the blur, top zero, left zero, and that should get them to perfectly overlap. But I want the gradient behind it, so I'll set Z index negative one. I didn't actually know you could do Z index negative one until recently, but that's pretty handy. Now we need to set the same border radius, which was five, and let's blur this layer. So I'm gonna use the CSS filter property and use the blur filter. I'm just gonna put five pixels for now to be able to see it really easily. I'll move that down to two, because I remember two was the correct value of blur from Figma. And let's put in the real colors here. So I'm gonna use RGBA 000 for black, and the alpha will be, I'm just gonna put 0 0.5 because I don't remember the actual number, and I'll go check those in a minute. I'll put 0 0.6 on this one. So in Figma, I'm gonna check what values I used on this linear gradient. So 
the first value was 16% and the other was 55%. So let's make that 0.16 and the other 0.55. All right, it's starting to look pretty good, but that blur is too big. So if I zoom way in, you can see that there's way too much blur there. We only wanted a couple pixels of blurriness, but this has like, I don't know, six or something. So I did a little research on this and it turns out the way the blur filter works in CSS uh, is a little different than the way it works in Figma or Sketch or even for other CSS properties like uh, text shadow or box shadow. The way the blur filter works is it, it increases the blur amount by even more than the radius value that you set. So if you set a five pixel radius value for your blur, you might expect five pixels of blurriness from where the edge would have been if it hadn't been blurred, but it actually extends further than that. So in the description, I'll link to kind of an interesting article about this that I found. Um, but for my purposes, I had to work around it because I'm trying to do a very, very small radius and <laughs> Setting, the, setting just one as your radius makes it go, you know, to like three or four pixels. So how do you get below that? You had to use this. That's the crazy hack that I'll show you how to do next. And I thought of a lot of different ways to counteract this. You know, the easiest would just be to set it to one pixel and see if that brings it in enough, but it doesn't. It's actually still too big. I tried half a pixel, but that doesn't work. It just goes to one pixel. So here's the big hack that I ended up using. It's kind of dumb, but it totally worked. So I'm just rearranging some of these properties. What I'm going to do is wrap a calc around these, a CSS calc function. I could just hard code in the numbers, but I thought this is a bit easier because what I'm doing is multiplying the border radius by two, the width by two, and the height by two. And then I'm going to use a CSS transform to scale this in half. So 0 0.5, 50% scale. Um, so that actually scaled toward the center of the, of the new bigger shape. So I have to set the transform origin to zero, zero, because I want it to go towards the upper left. Okay, so now it's right behind there. So what I did is I scaled it up um, double and then sized it back down by half. So this is going to, and I have a one pixel blur. So this is um, hopefully going to let me get that half pixel blur value that I would want. But when I zoom in here, it looks almost right, but I kind of think it's too light. So what I'm going to do is bring in a actual screenshot that I took from my image in Figma that I'm trying to match put that into my HTML, and this screenshot is kind of cut off on the left edge, you can see. So I'm gonna overlay this over the button. First, I need to set the width um, to half of what it, what it was, because it's a retina image. And then I'm gonna set position absolute and just use trial and error to get this on top of the other button. Okay, I've almost got it. And now it's perfectly lined up. So now what I can do is zoom in and see where they overlap and see that the one on the right, which is the screenshot, is a little bit darker. So the one on the left, which is my code, isn't quite right. Now I could try to darken the shadow on the bottom, or I could try to use a different blur radii and scale up a different amount and then transform back down different amounts. And that's actually what I did. And through this trial and error, which I'll spare you the details of, I, I realized that scaling it up four times and then scaling it down with the transform by 25%, so it's back to the original size. And using a three pixel blur on the blur filter got me a perfect match of those colors. So here you can't even see where the screenshot blends into the CSS on the shadows there. So I was happy with that, although this is a kind of a ridiculous hack, but it pretty exactly matches a native button. So now I can just remove that screenshot and there's my finished button.